There's a lot of hard stuff to learn when you become a photographer, but the one thing that I find people seem to struggle with the most is the inverse square law. And the thing about the inverse square law is that it's not really that hard to understand. It is if you try to understand the math of it. Well, then it's, you know, I don't know, long division and carry the one. But if you just try and understand the concept of the inverse square law and what it does to your photography, it's actually really, really simple. So let's get started. Let's say you're taking a picture of this person and you also want to include another person. And now you've got to light both these people. So here's your light source and here's the two people that you have to light. The thing to remember about the inverse square law is that it's all about ratios. It's not about the actual distance. It's about the ratio of the distance. The distance between the light source and the red man is the same as the distance between the red man and the blue man. So the blue man is twice as far from the light source as the red man is. Now, watch what happens if we move the light source further away. Now, the distance between the red man and the blue man is no longer twice as big as the distance between the red man and the light source. The ratio has changed. Instead of being twice as far from the light source, he's now only 50% farther. Now watch what happens if we move the light source really close. Now, the red man's very close to the light source, but the blue man is three times as far from the light source as the red man is. So what does all of this mean? Well, it's actually really simple. It just means that if you want the light to travel farther, you actually have to move it farther away from your subject. <laughs> I know that that doesn't seem to make sense, but it's all about the ratio. You see, the farther the light is away from your subject, then the smaller the ratio of the distance for the stuff that's behind your subject. And we see this all the time in studio photography. And what's really interesting is that I know people who work in the studio all the time who still kind of have a problem when they work in the field dealing with this particular phenomenon. But people who work in the studio know this. They know that if you want the shadows to be really deep on your subject, you move the light really, really close. And if you need to light a big group and you don't want shadows, you back the light up. And the same thing applies in the field. So if you're shooting at a wedding or some event and suddenly you've got to shoot a, shoot a group of people that's three or four uh, rows deep, you want to back your lights up. Because by backing your lights up, the ratio gets smaller. And when the ratio gets smaller, the light travels further. All right? That's the practical application. It's very, very simple. The farther you want the light to travel, the more you need to back it up. <laughs> I know it seems weird, but that's the way it works. And if you want the light to drop off really quick, if you want to light a person's face and have their ears be dark, then you need to put that light right up on their face. And this works too when you're working with a background, for example. Like if you're trying to light a person and you're trying to light the backdrop that's behind them, then you need to move your light back away from the person and away from the backdrop so the light can travel to that background. Because if you put that light right up on the person, the background is going to go completely dark. And that's the inverse square law. Thanks for watching.